Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. This is kind of a part three on the rotisserie chickens. So these are the bones and the scraps from the last five chickens, okay? I put it in my Instant Pot for five hours and then I let it sit on warm for, well, overnight. And it is deep and dark and rich colored. I love this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it and we're going to strain it into another pot so that we can separate all of the pieces that we want to keep from all the pieces that we don't want to keep, right? Because I don't want the skin, you know, <clears throat> but I like having it in there. Um, fat is where the flavor is, period. So I leave the fat in there when I'm rendering the broth because it's good stuff. Will this congeal potentially in your soup? Yeah, it can. Um, not a big deal though. And when you heat up your soup, it will go away. If you do not care for the fat, then you can obviously um, cool this off, okay? So you let it cool off, put it in the fridge, and then you can scrape off the fat um, and don't put the skin in when you're cooking it down. Definitely not something that you wanna do if fat bothers you. But I love the flavor. I think it's an amazing addition. And so that is what I do. Let me get you lined up different here. Okay, this is the fun part. So I'm ladling this at this moment because I have a feeling that this is gonna be more than what this pot can handle. We'll see. Nobody knows. And I'm gonna be doing something different. I'm not just canning the stock. I am actually going to take the bits and pieces of meat in here and then the um, pieces from the thighs that I kept in a bag and I'm going to can those together. I'm going to make a super basic uh, uh, chicken soup with this. So I'm using the bone broth, yum, and I'm using the chicken, and then I'm gonna can that up and I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then I will, when I'm ready, add in whatever I want into the chicken soup, right? So, I don't know, it might fit. It might fit, let's see. How much of a mess I make here. Oh, not too bad, go Lisa. Okay, and I didn't add any extra seasoning to this because I didn't find it to be necessary, okay? There we go. So that is a nice, beautiful, rich broth. I am loving this. This is all of the chicken that I have that was from the thighs, right? From the rotisserie chickens, the five rotisserie chickens. And now I'm gonna start going through this and taking out any chicken chunks that I find. And then we will start making some soup starter. This is all of the meat that I got off the thighs from the five rotisserie chickens. Um, after going through the scraps that were in the, the broth, um, I decided against using anything that was in there because it's really hard to find the bones and the bones are very, very soft and disintegrate. So there wasn't very much meat in there anyway. I mean, I had a couple pieces that I pulled out, not a big deal. So instead, I just have that really awesome bone broth right there. Now we are going to <clears throat> take these bigger pieces and we're going to chop them up. It's going to be so good. So I'm just going to go through and roughly cut up into smaller, more manageable pieces for chicken soup. Okay, because nobody needs a hunk of meat like that in their chicken soup. Yeah, it's good. I get it. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Just enough to make some smaller pieces. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, when you're making soup, remember we talked um, in the last chicken chat video with the rotisserie chickens that to can raw pack chicken, you can do raw pack chicken, you can do hot pack chicken. If you're going to use fully cooked chicken though, the only safe way to do it, the safe approved way to do it, is by making soup, okay? Um, because they have not tested it and because cooked meat, it takes longer for the heat to penetrate all of the meat. 
Now, when we're doing hot pack method, you're only cooking it two thirds of the way. But there is no safe approved method uh, for canning cooked meat when that's the only thing in the jar with the liquid. So we're gonna make soup instead because that is approved. And what we're gonna be doing here is a soup starter. So basically it's just gonna be chicken and the bone broth, the amazing bone broth. I am guesstimating that I'm only going to get uh, four quarts. You don't want to put more than half of the jar with solids, okay? So that is how we are factoring how much we can get in here. When I go to use these, I can do any number of things. I can add um, my freeze-dried vegetables, okay? I can add fresh vegetables. I can add just pasta. Yep, I'm going to get four jars. Um, I, you know, literally, the, the choices are endless, absolutely endless. So I am looking forward to having that kind of variety um, and option for my can, you know, for my soups moving into this. So I, you know, so one of these is a little less, which is fine. That just means I can make filled chicken and dumplings one night. Ha 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 ha. He's going to be so happy. Do you see that? That is patience of a saint right there praying that I drop something. My broth is warm. It's not hot, but it's warm. And so the water in my canner will be warm. Okay. We're going to fill these up to an inch head space. We look at that color. So good. There we go. This is like the best chicken soup ever. If you're not feeling good, you know, I didn't, I did not even add any spices or herbs or anything to this. I just did the rotisserie chickens and they were plain. They weren't, you know, because sometimes you get them, uh, I know like at Walmart, they have different flavors and I'm kind of like, eh, okay, I just kind of want chicken, but we're good. Um, and it looks like I'm going to have some extra broth. Now, if you do have extra broth, and which we will, and you want to can that at the same time, you absolutely can. Broth by itself is a lesser time frame than soup. Soup is a lesser time frame than the meat by itself, whether it's hot packed or raw packed. You can can the broth at that time. Not a problem. Okay. But look at that. Oh. So I got four quarts of chicken soup starter and two quarts of bone broth. And I have a smidge left in there that I'm going to pour into a cup and drink. I have my canner heating up and I'm going to clean off the rims here. Now, I did taste the broth. It has an amazing flavor. I must be needing the sodium or something because <clears throat> I'm really craving a little extra salt in there. So depending on your flavor, okay, what your favorite flavor profile is, um, you know, you may want to add salt, pepper, whatever, garlic. Um, I prefer it plain and then we can season it when we open it, which just really works better for us because you never know what kind of mood you're going to be in, right? So we have the rims all cleared off. Now we're going to put the lids on as is the norm. I'm using four jars canning lids. Yes, I am. Absolutely love these canning lids. They do fantabulous, and they have amazing customer service. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so now we're going to do finger tight, okay? So we're going to put that on. We're going to go until it stops. Period. We're done. No extra cranking. That, my friends, is finger tight, okay? If you put it on too tight, then the air that's in there, which is between the liquid and the top, that cannot evacuate, which it needs to do. That's part of the canning process. That's why headspace is so important, and that's why the proper headspace is so important. Because if you're just making up, well, that one is bent. Um, if you're just making up your own headspace, then you are not canning it safely because they factor in the headspace and what's needed for vacating uh, the excess air that is in there. Okay? Now, remember what I say, do your rings have to be pretty? No. If that's your biggest worry in life, rock on. Otherwise, they just, they're a tool. They're not an engagement ring. They're a tool. Let me go find a replacement. I have one. I have one right here. Okay. 
So they're just a tool, people, okay? So now these are all on, and now we are going to get them into the canner. Okay, so I've just got that heating up, and now we're going to place all six of these jars in here. We are going to can them, even though one is for soup, okay? And, or I mean four are for soup, and four are, or two are for, do your math, Lisa. Four are for soup, and two are for broth. It is okay to can the broth along with them. No harm, no foul. Okay, they're in there. So we're gonna put the lid on and let it come up to a steady stream of steam. While it's doing that, let me check in here for a second. There is no harm and no foul for putting the broth in there with the chicken soup, okay? They do have two separate times. I will put links to both of those in the description box below. Please check them out. Um, you never want to do, you whatever you put in there, you want to do it for the product that is in there with the highest processing time. So for me here, uh, broth is the lesser time and actual chicken soup is for the higher time. So we're going to process it all there. It won't do anything to your broth. It'll come out just fine. It's just processed a little bit longer. Okay, we're good. Four jars canning lids. Awesome. They come in packs of 100 or 50 um, or more, and they come, you can get them with the rings, you can get them with just the lids. They are, hands down, the best lids I've worked with in a very long time. And they answered our cries for help when we couldn't get lids because Ball decided that they were not going to increase their manufacturing. They left us high and dry. So I am a four jars fan Totally, totally a fangirl of four jars. Now, as you know, if you've been here for any length of time, we had uh, four jars on our Monday Night Live, I think three times now, discussing the different things that they're doing. And I think it's a fantabulous company. Absolutely fantastic. But probably, aside from the quality, which obviously I wouldn't be dealing with them if they weren't quality, but aside from the quality, my favorite part about this is the price point. It doesn't matter who you're comparing it against. The price point is spot on. A lot of the new lids that came on the market to save us, right, um, and the ones that were there, their price point's way too high, way too high. So I'm very happy with this. Now, I always get a question, because somebody always asks it, where are they made? Currently, today, they are manufactured in China. Um, there has been no disruption as far as getting them here, so they have never been out of stock. And they are working diligently to get them manufactured here. As I'm sure you're aware, okay, it's kind of difficult to get those kind of things started up right now with the economy and the world in the dumpster fire that it is. But they are working hard at doing it and bringing new products to all of us so that we can have a better, safer canning experience. You have to check out Four Jars. Remember, there's a coupon code down below. Uh, where if you use that link and put in the coupon code Sutton's 10, then you get 10% off your order. It's fantastic. So spot on price point, pre-pandemic price point, okay, and 10% off. Can't beat it with a stick. Okay, in the background, you probably hear Della yelling at her ball because that's what she does. So I apologize for that. But let's take a look here at what we've got coming out of the canner, okay? So we have a broth. Now, that one siphoned because I can see it on top, and I think it happened when I tipped the lid. So I probably didn't wait long enough. So, okay, that's what can happen. Hey, you guys want to see the oopses? We got it. Let me grab a towel. In all of my years, I have never had that happen before. So it could be any number of things. I'm thinking, you see how broth does that lava lamp thing? That's what's going on in there. And I don't think the lid was tight enough or it came unscrewed a little bit while it was, oh my gosh, while, uh, while you know, when it came out. <clears throat> and so it did that eruption. It did another one while I was cleaning up because cleaning up once is never enough. You should always have to clean up twice, right? Yep. Okay, so we have chicken soup starter. 
We have two jars of broth. <laughs> One of them's going in the fridge. I will be oiling my counters a little early. Um, but that is that is how it's done. That's how it happens sometimes. So it didn't it didn't siphon in the pot. It only did it when it came out. So I'm thinking it was a bit of a temperature shock. Um, I do have the windows cracked. Uh, maybe I should have waited a little bit longer since these are processed. The broth is processed for 25 minutes in quarts and the soup for 75 minutes. Okay. But maybe that was, do you see how it's still doing its thing? Huh? Very, very interesting. The lava lamp that is broth. It is always an experience. So this is, uh, canning the leftover chicken and the broth made from the chicken and the fact that you can do both at the same time because I don't think that was I don't think that played into that uh that experience at all I think that was strictly a uh temperature issue so there we go we have more good stuff to put up on the shelf I hope that you guys I hope that you guys check out four jars four jars canning lids uh, down in the link below. Remember you have a coupon and uh, give it a try. Even if you just do chicken soup starter, it's a great thing to do. Get those rotisserie chickens, do all the do with them and enjoy saving some money and putting some food up inexpensively in your pantry for a later date. It's going to be a long winter, my friends. Let's get stocked up. Until next time, everybody, please be safe.